So do you want to see some meat? Yes, yes, yes. Kindly show me. As you can see here, these are cow heads, the most sensitive parts of the of the meat. Um, so usually we have uh, stacks and stacks of heads. So, so whatever is here is not for you to sell. It's a uh, service you're offering yeah. to the. Yes, we're offering a pairs restore service. Farmer is the largest meat market in East uh, in Kenya. Um, so. You have over 360 meat vendors selling uh, over 1 million kilograms of meat on a daily basis. Hello, my name is Tracy Kimathi. I'm the founder of Baridi. Baridi was established in 2021 and it is a solar powered cold storage solution. We offer cold rooms within the milk value chain, meat value chain, fish, herbs, exports, um, and dairy cooperatives in general. Okay, so like I told you, friend, uh, this is a solar powered cold room. So it's an off grid system that requires not only solar to generate the asset, but also a battery system to generate um, electricity when there's no solar or the grid. Uh, now, this is our old technology. You know, we established in 2021. Uh, we, this is our very first, we call it our conventional technology where solar comes, is generated by the sun and then it stores in chemical uh, energy through the batteries and then it's converted to thermal energy in the cold room. But we've completely removed the setup from our assets. Now we're using something called thermal storage technology because batteries are extremely expensive. As you can see, this is a BYD lithium ion battery and it's only four hours autonomy. So four hours autonomy, it means it can only run four hours without sun or the grid. But with our new technology, which is called thermal storage, it can last up to nine months uh, without uh, using the grid. And this is because there's cold water that circulates around the cold room. So this is our outdated technology, but what we used to do is we used to use solar, battery, and cold room. But now we use solar, cold room, and thermal storage, uh, which is water circulating. So when, when you talk of thermal energy, is is the, the thermal energy powered by the solar or it's a unit by itself without any need of solar? Yeah, so it is powered by the solar. So what happens is when the solar energy, it uh, converts the liquid water into ice and then the ice is stored as uh, energy. And then when there's no um, sun or energy, then the ice melts into cold water and then it is pumped around the cold room. So we store energy in form of ice, ice blocks. So ice blocks when there's energy and then it melts to uh, cold water when there's no energy and then it's pumped around the cold room. So does it mean that in areas that receives low temperatures to uh, to a point of uh, like below 10 degrees, these can work perfectly to them. Yeah, so yeah, what people don't understand is uh, solar doesn't use heat, it uses light. Uh, so even on cloudy days, there's solar. So for 10 hours of sunlight, uh, you can cool your asset for 24 hours. So you can use it even when you're in Meru, uh, in a cold region, or when you're in Kajiado, in an extremely hot region, you can use it. So from from the power, because now I understand yeah. the power is this where we start. Yeah. What what specifically do we need the cold room or all this setup for? Yeah. So we need cold room and cold storage uh, so that you can preserve uh, products. So produce, i.e. farm fresh produce, whether that's meat, fish, vegetables, they need to be preserved uh, after slaughter, after catch, or after harvest. Uh, so post-harvest losses is one of the things that we prevent, but the key thing that we usually bring to our clients is energy cost reduction. So for you to run a cold room, that means you need it, uh, but what you're saving the most is uh, the amount of energy that you're saving from uh, KPLC or the grid. And is it available to all farmers or it's just meant for specific areas? 
Yeah, it is meant for an aggregation of farmers. So um, for an individual farmer, this asset could be uh, big. But for an aggregation of farmers like dairy cooperatives, uh, that's one of our key clients. So wherever farmers are aggregating, um, whether that's through a cooperative, a VMU, or an export farm, um, anywhere where the farmers are aggregating their produce, um, whatever the produce might be, flowers, herbs, uh, milk, meat, fish, yeah, you can get a coaching. To the local farmers, do they also need this kind of a setup? To the local market farmers? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, as long as you're harvesting your product uh, and you need it to stay fresh. I mean, I know Kuna Bay Gioni, so a lot of farmers can avoid uh, middlemen rushing them to sell by simply just having coaching. Um, but I would advise for them to aggregate store in large amounts that way they have uh, bargaining power um, and then they're storing it in cold chain so that you can allow um, uh, exploration of different uh, markets yeah the best location is it at the farm or in the market next to the market? ah so both points you need it at the farm level and you need it at the market level like you know here we are barma meat market which is a market in nairobi so anywhere where there's large aggregation of produce you need to have cold chain uh, not only at the farm level at the market level and at the consumerism level where the the uh, uh, the consumer buys it and um to the to the size because i understand the different farmers uh need different sizes because of their different need do you have all these sizes or you you just have one size like the one that i'm seeing here no so Maridi offers between one metric ton to five metric tons let's say because those are the ones that farmers buy the most but it can go as large as 100 metric tons for for warehouses uh, so between one metric ton to five metric ton most farmers uh, that's that's where they, their sweet spot is yeah so uh and uh, the cost, rough cost estimation yeah. in a setup, let's say for example a one metric ton, yeah. what is the rough cost estimation? Yeah, about uh, 28,000 USD, uh, but what we do is we work with uh, banks like the Cooperative Bank of Kenya and what we do is we try and get into an asset finance arrangement. Um, so we can work with your bank because these assets tend to be expensive. Uh, but the offset that you see, in, especially in electricity reduction, uh, flower farms will understand this, dairy cooperatives will understand this. If you really need a cold room, you'll understand why it's important to have asset financing for one and how important it is to solarize so that you don't pick it DLC uh, or the grid. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of money. Yeah. And um, I, I'm happy that you mentioned the bank and uh, the financing because um, in most cases we farmers lack the, uh, the, the financial capacity or the financial muscle to be able to buy such, uh, such um, an investment. Yeah. And um, you said, is it in all banks that are working with farmers or there is a specific financial institution that you link farmers with? Okay, so we work with Cooperative Bank, especially for the dairy value chain. So you have to remember, because the assets are a lot, farmers have to aggregate. Uh, so whether that's through a cooperative, a BMU for the fish, uh, we like working with groups of farmers rather than a singular farm, unless they're an export farm, you know? Um, so we work with Cooperative Bank, uh, they assess your, your history as a group of farmers and then they're able to link you with credit um, yeah, for the asset. And wh wh what is your big advice that, that made, makes you feel that farmers need this? Mm. Yeah, yes. just simply because we've been able to install them and we've been seeing impact. So, for example, we sell a uh, bulk milk cooler. There's one 1,000 liter bulk milk cooler at Wasingishu. They save uh, about 127,000 Kenyan shillings every month on electricity costs. Um, so if you're in the dairy market or the flower market, you understand how uh, expensive these cold rooms are to run. Uh, we simply reduce your costs. Uh, you can save a lot of operational costs uh, for that. Um, and we've seen it in, especially in our dairy sites, especially in our livestock sites, uh, and especially within our export farm sites. Uh, people save hundreds and thousands of shillings in electricity costs 
and hundreds and thousands of shillings in product was passed uh, on. And um, the technical part, I understand uh, also this new technology comes with the technical part. Once you install, are uh, you always available to make sure it runs as it's supposed to run or you install and everything is left to the farmer? No, so these are training, so things like washing solar panels can be easily trained. And then we also have operation and maintenance services. So we can sign an o and contract, some export funds uh, prefer that. Uh, or we can train, right? So there are a lot of um, uh, trainable skill uh, at the farm level. So it's a matter of training them. If you see this, uh, react like this. Uh, and we also have a software uh, that can have shutdown procedures, can alert you when, when the asset is low, can tell you what the temperature ranges are. So we also incorporate software. Uh, so obviously this training and then there's the software where if something uh, happens or you want to monitor it constantly, you can do that as well. Are you also following the track system for these? The role is that have could remove it's just uh, just stationed yeah. could do. Yeah, so currently we are only doing fixed assets, uh, but we have a software that we can put in fixed assets. Like uh, a farmer wants to know what temperature their produce is exposed to at all times, whether the door is open or closed. Uh, if you're a farmer who's interested in the carbon market, you want to see how much kilowatt hour solar is being generated. Uh, so we have some farmers who, who are interested in the carbon offset as well. So we can provide that data. We can provide data on how much money in Kenyan shillings have you saved from the grid by using our assets as well. So you can monitor how your asset is doing through our software. Yeah. And in terms of security, so I understand also security is a factor in our farms. Yeah. Uh, do you have security measures for the system? Yeah, so you can get insurance um, as a package. Uh, most banks give out insurance. Uh, so you take anti-theft, uh, anti-nature uh, insurance. Um, and then also you can galvanize. You can do some things like galvanizing the solar panels on the, on the cold room. You know, so those are some of the, the security measures we take. Like here in Burma, we secure it in a, in a space that you can lock from the outside. So those are things that we'll advise you. There are some people, we have containers, right? So we, we put the cold room in a 40-foot container, for example, and then you can be able to secure it. So those are just conversations we have in the design process. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to see something? Yes, 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 kindly show me.